In this video, we are going to talk about some of the top myths in regards to 3D scanners and 3D scanning. Now, EMS has been involved in this industry since 2001, performing 3D scanning, reverse engineering, CAD modeling, inspection, and other engineering services. And we have talked to thousands of people over the years, and we get a lot of the same common questions or myths from people that maybe just don't understand uh, the process or how the results are given or information they uh, see on websites or from the manufacturers. And there's just a lot of misinformation out there or deceptive information. And we thought we would put together what we uh, get the, uh, the, the most questions on and try to uh, uh, kind of answer some of these questions or, or really just help people better understand uh, some of these these questions. So we'll go through and cover the top five myths about 3D scanning. All right, so myth number one is people will say to us, well, the prices are coming down or they're going to go down, so I'm going to wait. Well, the reality is, if you look at the 3D scanners that we've been selling over the years, for the most part, the price has actually gone up. Uh, not a lot, but it's gone up. Um, now, there are certainly consumer-grade scanners that, that are lower in price. There are new uh, models from some of the manufacturers we represent that are lower in price. Uh, but those models, both the consumer and, and the lower price models, basically have less features, um, usually less accuracy, less data quality, things like that. Um, if you look at a particular model uh, over the last, let's say, 15 years, they've actually gone up a little bit in price. Um, so why is that? Well, um, to develop, you know, new features uh, as new models come out or, you know, replace existing models, they typically are going to have new features. Uh, they're going to have higher uh, accuracy. Uh, they may have higher uh, resolution. Uh, which ultimately leads to better, better data quality. Um, also, if you look at cost of certifying uh, the, the scanners, your higher-end scanners tend to have certifications like uh, you know, ISO and other certifications. Um, the, uh, you know, all of this requires research and development. Um, you know, that requires a, a lot of work to develop new scanners. Um, and then usually on these kind of higher-end commercial scanners, the customer is going to expect, you know, good service, support, and repair. Typically, they're going to come with a one-year warranty that covers all of that. And then you also have to look at the, you know, the 3D scanner market is still a pretty low-volume market. So we're not selling thousands and thousands of these every year. Um, so that, you know, dictates what these uh, systems can be sold at because it is a low-volume and you know, cost of the raw materials and sensors and the housings and plastic and you know all of those things um, that generally go up in price. Also, on the commercial grade scanners, they usually come with some pretty good software for you know collecting the scan data, uh, being able to do some manipulation and things like that. So again, when people come to us and say, well, you know, gee, that's expensive and I'm going to wait because they're going to go down in price. Um, we haven't seen it with all the different scanner manufacturers we represent. If you look at a specific model, um, it's either stayed the same or gone up slightly in price over the years. And again, yes, you can buy some consumer grade stuff that's much cheaper. You might be able to buy a lower end model but if you look at any given model uh, or capabilities of a specific scanner over time, they really haven't gone down in price. They've really kind of stayed the same or gone up slightly in price. All right, so the next one on our list of top five is direct CAD import. Uh, this one is also very common, and people... Um, are under the misunderstanding that once you're done 3D scanning, that you either have a CAD model or you can load that directly into your CAD system and work with it. 
Um, and that's just simply not the case. Most 3D scanners are either outputting the scan data as a point cloud, which is literally just individual points uh, with XYZ values and maybe a, a normal vector, or it's a polygon mesh, which would be a triangulated mesh in a format like STL, or maybe if you're doing color scanning, it might be OBJ, uh, where it has a texture map associated with it. Um, but a few things. One, this is not CAD data, and we have some videos that go into much more detail on this and you know, show you uh, specifically why. Uh, and secondly, most CAD systems cannot really do much with raw 3D scan data in either one of those formats. Um, you will typically be able to import them into your CAD system, but most of them don't allow you to edit the 3D scan data. They don't even really let you interrogate it, um, for example, to pull dimensions or cut sections or anything like that. Now, some CAD systems do have some you know, reverse engineering software, but most of it we've seen is not very good. Some of the very high-end systems uh, do have, um, I would say, some halfway decent uh, capabilities, but not near as good as very specific reverse engineering software, uh, you know, like products from some of the some of the scanner manufacturers have their own. Um, and then there's third party ones like uh, Geomagic and uh, Polyworks and, and, and others. So most of the built in features just don't work well in the CAD systems. And, you know, there is also no push button to get to a CAD model. And again, we do have some videos that show the complete process, but to go from triangulated scan data to an actual CAD model, which is a feature-driven or surface-driven model, typically is going to require, uh, A, not only some work, but usually some kind of third-party software. So the myth that you can bring scan data in and work uh, with it in most CAD systems isn't true, and, it, and it's just not typically usable data in its raw format. Um, it's got to be either reverse engineered um, or, you know, uh, if you were doing inspection, you'd create inspection reports and other things. Um, but it is not usable in its raw format. Okay, so moving along, number three on our list is one scanner for all. And basically what this means is uh, many times people believe that you can buy one 3D scanner and do just about everything you would want to do as far as 3D scanning. And that's simply not the case. Um, there are many factors you have to look at when buying a scanner. And we've done a separate video on this one as well. But many people think they can buy a particular scanner and use it for everything. So... What really drives uh, what is the right scanner uh, will vary by a lot of different things. One of the first ones you'll think of is part size. Um, if you look at this example here, uh, we've got a dime with a little tiny gear on it versus you know a very large aircraft there in the background. Um, those are two very different scanners uh, to get those results. So part size will play a lot into it. Are you doing primarily small parts? Are you doing primarily large parts? Um, are you doing a little bit of everything, which uh, can be a challenge? So um, there are a lot of different technologies out there, and some are well-suited for large, some are well-suited for small, and some um, are a little more versatile. So you got to look at that, but there is not one scanner that's going to do everything. And then also accuracy. Um, in any given part size, you've got varying accuracies that different scanners will do. Typically, the more accurate you want to be, the more expensive the scanner will be. Um, and then you got to look at your application. Are you just doing reverse engineering or do you also need to do inspection? Um, you may get away with a lower priced, less accurate scanner for reverse engineering. But if you're also trying to do inspection, that may not have uh, good enough accuracy. Um, are you doing probing? Uh, which can be uh, very different than 3D scanning. We kind of classify it under 3D scanning, but it's really like a portable CMM. So if you're doing a lot of holes, um, you know, do you need to do a lot of probing? Same with alignments. Those are, that's typically done 
with a laser tracker. Um, so, but do you also maybe need to do probing? Are you just trying to do documentation, meaning just digitally capture things? Or are you doing more what I call BIM or AEC, which is your architecture, civil, GIS, things like that? Um, or are you doing things for entertainment or art? So you've got to look at your part size. You've got to look at the uh, accuracy and the application. But the thought that you can buy one scanner and do this little tiny part sitting on a dime and do that whole airplane um, just is not going to be the case. Um, um, those are very different scanners. So one scanner is not going to meet all your needs. Um, what you'll try to do is define your needs and maybe pick the best scanner. But um, it's not a one size fits all when it comes to uh, 3D scanning. All right. So number four on our list is accuracy is the same, meaning that different manufacturers will state accuracies and users may think um, that those are the same kind of results um, from different manufacturers. And the problem is there is no single standard for accuracy. So you may see two scanners from two different manufacturers both stating the same accuracy and think, well, you know, these two scanners have the same accuracy. So I will look at other factors. And that may not be really the case because there are many factors that play into the accuracy. Uh, for example, the environment. Uh, in a perfect lab environment, uh, yes, they may have the same accuracy, uh, but one of them may not work very well outside. Uh, one may not work under conditions of like vibration or noise or something like that. Also, the user involvement in, in the scanner. Some scanners are very easy to use, and it's very difficult for the user to affect it in a way that would change the accuracy. And other scanning systems can be quite complex, so there can be a lot of user error, which will drive uh, you know, that accuracy to not be what it, it's supposed to be. Uh, part size can also play into it. Um, what was the standard that was used for, for the accuracy statement? Uh, for example, let's say it was a, you know, a measurement uh, at 12 inches, but you're trying to sc uh, scan or, or measure things that are, you know, five feet in size. That accuracy statement from two different manufacturers on a part at five feet may be quite different just because of the way their technology works. Also, surface finish, um, things that are dark or shiny or translucent. Um, can affect different scanners in different ways. So if you're scanning things uh, that have some challenging surface finishes, you could get quite different results. Um, same with technique, how you do the scanning. Um, this gets a little bit back to user error, but um, you know what what techniques are required to get that accuracy. Um, you know, and what was the scanner designed to do? Are you trying to do something with it? It's really not, or you know, push it way outside its accuracy uh, boundaries. But again, you've got to look at the, the statement of accuracy and how they got to the results that they got. Um, was it you know, uh, done in an ISO certified lab? And again, what standard are they using? There's quite a few different standards out there. Uh, and other manufacturers claim accuracies, but yet don't tell you any standard that they used uh, to get that accuracy. So you have really no idea what the accuracy is of that scanner for what you want to do. So to make a statement that all scanners have the same accuracy, or again, you might look at two or three different manufacturers and they all claim to have the same accuracy number, you've got to look into that deeper and find out exactly you know, how they came up with that, that accuracy statement. So you can't just think that they're all the same because that's what the manufacturers post. You've got to, again, look into where they came up to that and then look at those different factors of size, environment, and so forth to determine, you know, what's going to be the true accuracy for your application. Okay, so our last one in the top five 3D scanning myths is scanning is fast. Now, you might say, well, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I've seen some other videos from you, and you're talking about how fast a particular 3D scanner might be. Well, 3D scanners in and of themselves have certainly gotten faster uh, over the years, but the whole process of 3D scanning 
still takes time. The scan, the scanners themselves are certainly faster, but the whole process is quite involved. So the first step is to 3D scan the object. Um, and again, that, that can happen pretty quick these days. But then what are you doing with that data when you're done? Most people are going to do something beyond just scanning it. Um, so for example, if you're going to create a CAD model for, from that, you're going to need to do some data prep. You're going to need to clean it up, maybe put it into an alignment. Maybe you took multiple scans and you need to merge them all together. Uh, maybe you uh, will use a, a process called decimate or decimation where you optimize the triangle count to make it easier to work with. Maybe you've got a lot of scatter data and some other stuff um, that you got to clean up. So just this process alone can take time. And especially with some of these newer 3D scanners that can collect so much data, the files are becoming quite large, uh, making that a challenge. So once you get it all cleaned up, then what are you going to do with it? Well, if you're going to do CAD modeling or reverse engineering, you got to build sketches, and then you might do extrusions or lofts or merge things together and then offset it and then trim it and so forth. So that process takes time. And as we said earlier in this video, there is no automated 3D modeling software. There is no 3D scan to CAD button. Okay. And inspection is similar. For inspection, you got to you got to clean it up. You got to put it in a alignment system. And then you got to generate your inspection report. Uh, and depending on how many features you have on that report, um, it can take uh, quite some time to do. Um, and then you got to run it. So the whole process is going to take hours to days to weeks, depending on what it is. Um, so yes, 3D scanners have certainly gotten faster. And even the software has gotten better for reverse engineering and inspection. Uh, but most, most projects that we get involved with uh, at a minimum are a day uh, or longer uh, to do it. Uh, a simple CAD model might take a day. Uh, but many complex parts uh, take, you know, many days to get done. If not, you know, some of them can be weeks. So um, the whole process still takes time, and people don't understand that because especially now with some of these fast 3D scanners, um, you know, you can scan a part in a matter of minutes. But again, you can have some considerable time, depending on what you're doing, to get it to... Uh, you know, the final output you're looking for, which may be a CAD file or an inspection report. So this wraps up our video on the top five myths about 3D scanning. And the point here is whether you're looking to buy your own 3D scanner or maybe having 3D scanning done as a service, you really need to do your homework and separate kind of fact from fiction um, because, again, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And really the best thing for you to do is ask those questions or do your own homework and try to determine what is reality and what is maybe the perception or myth or misunderstanding about 3D scanning.